Dr. Emma Hit Nichols. I'm so glad you're listening to this podcast. We have about, um, I don't know, 15 or 16 episodes out at this point. So my hope, my sincere hope, is that this podcast will, in just 10 minutes each week, help keep you up to date with the latest FDA approval decisions. It's really, I think, the perfect way to stay informed while commuting to work or going for a morning walk or whatever it is that you do when you listen to your podcasts. All right. So this week we're talking about a new multiple sclerosis biosimilar. We're talking about a new approval for RSV, maternal immunization. We're talking about uh, Riprevent in advanced NSCLC and then also a, an extension of the indication for Xtandi into early prostate cancer. And of course, you can see the full write-ups for today's episode at nascentmc.com forward slash podcast. All right, first up this week, the FDA has approved Tybuco, also called Natolizumab SZTN, and this is the first biosimilar to Tisabri Natolizumab injection for the treatment of adults with relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. A biosimilar uh, just FYI, is a biological product that is highly similar to and has no clinically meaningful differences from a biological product already approved by the FDA. That's also called the reference product. The prescribing information for natalizumab products, including Tyruco and Tisabro, contains a boxed warning about increased risk of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, PML, and that's a viral infection of the brain that usually leads to death or severe disability. Because of the risks of PML, natalizumab products are available only through a REMS program. The most common side effects associated with natalizumab products are headache and fatigue. The FDA granted approval of Tyruco, which is, again, the first biosimilar to Tysabri natalizumab to Sandoz, Inc., Tyruco is also indicated for inducing and maintaining clinical response and remission in adult patients with moderately to severely active Crohn's disease. Also this week, the FDA has approved a BRISVO, which is a bivalent RSV prefusion vaccine for the prevention of lower respiratory tract disease, LRTD, and also severe LRTD caused by RSV in infants from birth up to six months of age. The new approval allows for the immunization of pregnant individuals at 32 through 36 weeks of gestational age. Abrisbo is unadjuvanted and composed of two pre-F proteins selected to optimize protection against RSV A and B strains. The FDA's decision is based on data from the pivotal phase three clinical Matisse trial. That stands for Maternal Immunization Study for Safety and Efficacy. And that's a randomized trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine in April 2023. RSV is a common cause of respiratory illness worldwide. The virus can affect the lungs and breathing passages of infected individuals, potentially causing severe illness or death. In the U.S., approximately 500,000 infants experience LRTD due to RSV each year, and it's a leasing cause of hospitalization in children younger than one year of age. Abrisbo was also approved for the prevention of RSV in adults age 60 and older. On May 31st, 2023, Abrisbo is manufactured by Pfizer, Inc. Attention all businesses in need of exceptional medical writing support. We're nascent medical and we are the solution. We are a team of skilled MD and PhD level medical writers who specialize in fast turnaround needs assessments, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more. Don't settle for anything less than pure excellence when it comes to your medical writing assistance. Just visit us at nascentmc.com. We're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing assistance. That's nascentmc.com. Also this week, a Supplemental Biologics License Application, SBLA, has been filed with the FDA for the expanded approval of Ribrevent, that's also called Mevantamab VMJW, in combination with carboplatin and pamitrexid for the frontline treatment of patients with advanced NSCLC with EGFR exon 20 insertion mutations. 
Vibrivent is a bispecific EGFR-directed and MET-receptor-directed antibody. Vibrivent was granted breakthrough therapy designation for this indication in May 2021. The current application comes after the Phase 3 Papillon trial demonstrated a significant improvement in progression-free survival with Vibrivent plus chemotherapy compared to chemotherapy alone. Vibrivent is manufactured by Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Also last week, the FDA has granted priority review for a supplemental new drug application for Xtandi and Zalutamide in patients with non-metastatic castration-sensitive prostate cancer with high-risk biochemical recurrence. An anticipated FDA decision for this indication is expected in the last quarter of 2023. Extandi is an androgen receptor signaling inhibitor already indicated for use in later stages of prostate cancer. The new approval would indicate Extandi earlier in the course of the disease. The SNDA is based on results from the phase 3 MBARC trial. Extandi was evaluated in combination with luprolide and showed a significant 58% reduction in the risk of metastasis or death compared with placebo plus luprolide. Extandi is manufactured by Pfizer, Inc. All right, those are the approvals and applications this week. And then also we have some upcoming PDUFA dates coming this week. There is a target PDUFA date for actually today, if you're listening to this on Monday, August 28th, for BMS's Reblosal, that's Laspatercept, A-A-M-T, The new approval, if granted, will expand the drug's current indication to include treatment of anemia without previous use of erythropoiesis-stimulating agents in adult patients with very low to intermediate-risk myelodysplastic syndromes who may require red blood cell transfusions. Then also this week, the upcoming PDUFA is for ONS5010, that's also called LightNava, L-Y-T-E-N-A-V-A. That's an investigational ophthalmic formulation of bevacizumab for the treatment of wet age-related macular degeneration. It's manufactured by Outlook Therapeutics. The PDUFA gold date is Tuesday of this week. ONS 5010, if approved, is expected to receive 12 years of regulatory exclusivity in the United States. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Please do tell your colleagues if you think it might be helpful to them. This is always posted on LinkedIn on the nascent medical page. You can access it there or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks so much. 